Guys, what is going on? Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Welcome to my channel, Jag Fishing. And guys, today we are going to talk about fishing the Salmon River in Pulaski, New York. All right, guys, I don't know if you guys can see right in front of me, there's a salmon. Not too big, but there you go. There you go. Got him. Perfect, perfect in the mouth. Okay. Let's see if this could be the fastest catch ever. Now chances are that if you clicked on this video, you might be a first time goer to Pulaski and trying to get an idea of how to fish in the Salmon River, because it is a little tricky. I'm gonna explain the best that I can, the basic stuff for fishing the Salmon River, because the first time I went up there, before I knew anything, I tried looking at the rules and regulations, I tried looking up on YouTube videos, and I could just not find anything about this flossing technique that everybody talks about that they use in the salmon river when fishing the salmon river you will see people fishing with all types of rods whether it be fly rods or spinning rods chances are these people are using the flossing technique now the flossing technique is essentially snagging with style if you will so yes it is sort of a snagging technique but not really because you have to hook the fish in the mouth okay so now you're probably asking yourself how do i snag a fish in the mouth right okay so basically guys the idea is to cast your line in front of the salmon usually they'll have little pockets that they hang out with when they're moving upstream and as long as your line and hook are moving simultaneously downstream and your depth is at the fish's mouth you're probably going to hook up now the way it works is the salmon actually move upstream with their mouth open and this is the target area. This is where we want that line to go through. The idea is to have your hook and your weight, okay, which is gonna be a two to four foot leader, moving simultaneously downstream because there's always current. And you want that to be going in a straight line. So when the salmon is standing right there, you are able to floss it in the mouth. So that means that line is gonna be going right where the salmon is. And then once that line goes through it, the weights are going to keep going and your hook is either going to get them on the outside of the mouth or the inside of the mouth and then boom fish on game on hold on because you're in for a ride oh. now salmon move upstream with their mouth open so that is the target area now these are not small fish so you're looking at a target area about this big so anywhere where that line falls and usually they're sticking to the bottom so as long as that thing's moving just over the bottom boom you get it and it's game on baby now keeping your leader moving steady at the right depth depends a lot on how fast the current is moving uh, for example, the faster the current, the more weights you want on your line to keep it down towards the bottom, okay? When I say weights, I mean you're going to be using split shots. And the my preferred total weight of these split shots, I usually put four, five, six of them, depending on the current, is about quarter to half an ounce of weight. So whatever split shots you want to use, that's totally up to you. It's personal preference. Some people spread them out. Some people bunch them out you're gonna get the feel of it once you guys feel it out and you guys get in the zone and you're able to see that line running smoothly in a straight line and it's just above bottom you're not really snagging anything you guys are doing it right and you're gonna get used to it now you're not gonna be really casting out a lot you're not gonna be doing any of that you're gonna probably find a hole so make sure you guys bring your waders because you're gonna be in that river with some fast moving current and what you're gonna be doing is sort of fly fishing with whether you have a fly rod or a spinning rod and just keep recasting in that same hole just recasting you're not even going to be reeling it in okay you're just going to let out some line recast it and recast it and recast it and if there's a salmon in that hole at some point you are going to hit them now what happens when you guys snag a fish and by snagging a fish i mean anywhere outside the mouth okay that is considered a foul hooked fish you have to release it as quick as possible and unharmed back into the water because if not the dc has eyes all over those hills and you're going to be paying a hefty price another thing i want to touch on is when you are using the flossing technique you cannot use an empty hook you need something on the end of the hook now there is not really a perfect bait for the salmon because people and people will argue with me on this in this video once the salmon hit the river they will not strike um, people, there are videos out there where the salmon do strike when they come into the river, but my theory is that they strike out of aggression if you piss them off enough. 
but I, and I know I'm gonna get so much hate and I know somebody's already writing the comment right now probably saying no you're an idiot they do <sighs> that's just my personal opinion okay your your opinion is yours my opinion is mine now guys anyway as I was saying you can't have an empty hook you need something on there so you guys can go ahead and get yourself something like this which is a spawn sack okay which is this is real eggs then you can get something like an imitation spawn sack which is just rubberized and it looks like a spawn sack and these are pretty good because these are durable or this it may be really weird to some of you guys, but this is actually really excellent. A piece of sponge, okay? This thing will last you such a long time. All you're gonna do is just take a little piece of it and rip it off and that's all you need, okay? Now this is gonna be great because there's something on the hook so you're doing it legally. And on top of that, you have an indicator of where your hook is because you're gonna be doing a lot of sight fishing. Now, all you're gonna do is you're gonna take this on your hook, wrap it around a couple of times, make sure it's on there and Unless you get snagged up and you lose your hook, which is probably going to happen quite a few times, you're not going to lose this bad boy. Let's talk about tackle. Now, if you're a beginner, there's, yes, there's all these fancy rods and all this fancy stuff. Now, if you're a beginner, you're, it's your first time going up there. Me, personally, I just got myself a six foot, six inch, medium action, ugly stick from Walmart for like 30 bucks or something. Got myself the combo and it did just great. Now, a longer rod is preferable, but if that's what you got, that's what you got. It will do the job. As far as line is concerned, you don't want to go overkill. These are not stupid fish. If you have thick line, they will see it and they will notice it and they will avoid it. So what I like to do is I like to have 12 pound test monofilament main line and then my leader is usually gonna consist of either eight or 10 pound test line. Personally, I like to use the Berkeley Vanish because it seems to work good, disappear underwater and I definitely hooked up on a lot more salmon using that than anything else. Something else that is extremely vital is, guys, these are big, strong fish, okay? If you hook up onto one, they're gonna take off and you're in for one hell of a ride. You wanna have your drag actually quite, quite low, okay? Because if you have that drag set high, that fish is just gonna rip that hook right out. You're not gonna stand a chance or it's gonna break your line. You really gotta fight these fish the right way and play with them. And it is just such an amazing feeling. I, you guys are gonna have a blast if this is gonna be your first time going. Let's talk regulations. There is no cutting corners when you're fishing the Salmon River in Pulaska, New York. During the salmon run, there's DC everywhere. You are gonna think there's somebody fishing next to you, but that's really a DC officer. Do not try to do anything stupid, guys. Besides, do the right thing, have fun the right way. Let's play it legally. So here are some of the regulations you really need to know. You need to know that fishing is only permitted one half hour before sunrise to one half hour after sunset, okay? Fishing at night is prohibited and illegal. The distance between a hook shaft and point cannot exceed one half inch, okay? So your hook's gotta be out of a certain size. Now, the distance between the hook or artificial fly, if you guys are fly fishing, or any weight attached to the line or leader shall not exceed four feet, okay? So that means it, your leader, guys, has to be no longer than 48 inches, okay? Which is four feet. Preferably, I would recommend something between two and four feet. You guys are gonna see what's more comfortable for you go with that if you guys see a pot of fish somewhere in there the last thing you guys want to do is try to get them to move okay do not throw stones do not try to walk through them do not frighten them do not scare them in any shape way or form that is highly illegal and it will get you jammed up and extremely important all foul hooked must be immediately released without unnecessary injury obviously we are snagging in the mouth however anything outside of the mouth body top of the head whatever anything not close proximity to its mouth got to go right back in so as soon as you get it don't mess around taking too many pictures no just get it in there as soon as you can now remember guys if the fish is hooked anywhere except the inside or the outside of its mouth it is considered to be foul hooked all right, now once you guys are familiar with that stuff, let's talk about the daily limits and length of keeping fish in the Salmon River. Now guys, when we are talking about coho salmon, king salmon, and brown trout, we are looking at a minimum of 15 inches. 
Good luck finding a king salmon that's 15 inches in there. You're gonna be fishing for fish that are about three, four foot long. Atlantic salmon, which are quite rare, but you do see them in the Salmon River, and rainbow trout or steelhead are 25 inches minimum. Now guys, as far as the possession limit, it states you may possess three fish in combination, not to include more than one rainbow trout or steelhead and one brown trout. All right guys, the possession limit consists of three fish, okay? And out of that entire combination, you can have three salmon, um, whether it be three kings, three cohos, but you can only possess one rainbow trout or steelhead, whichever you want to call it, and one brown trout, okay? So make sure you guys don't have two steelhead or two brown trout at any given time on your stream because that's going to get you jammed up. All right, one thing that is extremely important, you guys need to bring a good amount of gear with you, okay? You guys are going to need a lot of split shots, a lot of hooks, because you are going to be going through that stuff a lot. So I can explain to you guys as much as I can verbally to tell you guys how to rig this up and it just won't make sense. So I'm going to show it to you guys. Okay, now here, let's just focus this in. Now here's my hook and this is a short version. Okay, now this would be your leader, which would go about four feet, which would go into your barrel swivel. Let the camera focus in. There we go, into your barrel swivel. Now, I only have a little piece of line because I just want to show you guys real quick what we're talking about. Now, this would be your main line over here, okay? This is where you would have all your split shots. In this scenario, uh, I have five split shots. It might be enough weight to get me down where I need to be. Probably would need some more, but that depends on the current. All right, so one more time, guys. This right here is your main line. This is where you have the split shots. And it's a good idea to have your split shots on your main line, so, Obviously, you're going to be using a leader line that is a little weaker. So if anything snaps off, chances are it's going to be this, or at least you won't be losing your split shots. But as I was saying, main line, you got your split shots, then you have your barrel swivel. Now you would ideally go up to four feet, which is 48 inches, the maximum you can go to, attached to, ow, a sharp hook, apparently. And on, to, on the end of that, you would put one of the pieces I just showed you, whether it be a spawn sack, uh, imitation spawn sack or just a piece of sponge whatever you guys want now I'm gonna give you guys a little tip and I highly 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 recommend you guys do this now if we're fishermen we have these little baggies lying all around okay what I suggest you guys do because the last thing you want to be doing is playing around and tying hooks and all this stuff and swivels while there's a pot of salmon in front of you that's the last thing you want to do now what I, and I'm gonna take these split shots off put in my pocket for now now what you want to do is you want to make a couple of liters. Obviously, as I said before, this one is too short. I just did it for the purposes of this video. Now what you want to do is get yourself a liter that's about two to four foot long, whatever your preference is. Attach the barrel swivel in the end, leave this end empty. And then what you're just going to do is you're just going to roll it up nicely. You're going to take one of these packages and then you're just going to put it inside and you're going to save it. And you want to make yourself at least like three to four packs of this. So if you have a pot of salmon in front of you, you are not messing around and playing around, trying to figure out what knot you want to use and then they swim off. That's the last thing you guys want. So I highly recommend you do that. It will help you out and save you a load of time. All right, guys, I hope I covered all the basics in this video. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below and I will answer you as quick as I can to the best of my abilities. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope I was able to shed some light on some questions you may have had before watching this video. And if you did like it, if you did find it informative, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you could at least leave me a thumbs up, maybe a comment down below anyway, that would greatly help me out with the YouTube algorithm. It it helps more people see this video and that helps me out tremendously so again guys thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this and until next time guys tight lines <laughs>